excited to be here with you guys. I'm ready to worship with you guys. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, Lord Jesus. Father, give us strength, Father, this morning. Lord Jesus, come and have your way in this house, Father. Re-energize us, Lord Jesus, in your presence and in your word, Father, in the washing of our minds and our hearts this morning. We love you and we glorify you, Lord Jesus. Inhabit the praises of your people this morning. And all of God's people said, amen. Let me see everybody put their hands together this morning. Be our rhythm this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. And when I'm in the roughest waters, I won't go under, I won't drown. And when I'm in over my head, I know that you won't let me down. Cause when I'm broken, down to nothing, I know that you are always up to something good. Yes, you are. I know that you are always up to something good. Thank you, Jesus. Cause you'll make a way, whatever it takes. There's nothing your love won't endure. I know that you are always up to something good hallelujah thank you jesus father we thank you for your goodness this morning and your faithfulness lord hallelujah al caminar por esos valles tú vas conmigo tú eres fiel porque yo sé tú no me dejas tú me rodeas no temeré cuando me encuentro sin aliento, yo sé que todo siempre tú lo haces bien. Sí, Señor, yo sé que todo siempre tú lo haces bien. Señor, el mar abrirás, tu mano lo hará. Tu amor todo lo vencerá Yo sé que todo siempre tú lo haces bien En la oscuridad a mi lado vas Siempre permaneces En cada temor de tu mano voy Siempre me sostienes Through the darkest night, you are on my side. You are always faithful. Through my fear and doubt, you will lead me out. You are always able. Thank you, Jesus. You are faithful. sing it out cause I know that you are always up to something good hallelujah I know that you are always up to something good thank you Jesus cause you'll make a way whatever it takes there's nothing your love won't endure I know that you are always up to something good cause you'll make hallelujah cause you'll make a way whatever it takes there's nothing your love won't endure I know that you are always up to something good hallelujah father we thank you Lord Jesus Father, because even when we don't see it, we don't feel it, Father, we know that you are always up to something good. Father, because we love you, and Father, we put you first in every decision that we make, Father, because we know that you, Father, know all, and that your plans are greater and higher than ours could ever be, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. 
This isn't just a song. It can be just a song. But when you declare these words, you are the alpha, no matter what it looks like, no matter how frustrated I am, no matter how much I feel out of place or I feel like my life's falling apart. If you start stepping into these words, you are the alpha. You are my beginning, you are my end, and you're in the middle. And I'm going to trust you even through this storm. I'm going to trust you whenever I don't even feel like lifting my hands. I'm going to lift my hands. And I'm going to say the name of Jesus even when I feel weird and I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I'm going to keep saying his name because I need breakthrough. I need joy. I need peace. I need freedom. So when we're here and we come in the mornings, this is our opportunity to lay everything inside and say, I'm going to keep singing. I'm going to keep praising. Even when I'm hurting, even when I'm broken, or even when I'm happy and I'm joyful, I'm going to keep on going. Because, Lord, you are my everything. This is what this is saying. You hold me together. 
You are in the middle. Come on, let's sing it and declare it. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're in the middle. You hold it all together. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're in the middle. You hold it all together. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're in the middle. You hold it all together. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're in the middle. You hold it all together. Hold it all together. Come on, declare it. You hold it all together. You refine, you renew. You hold it all together. We believe, we trust. You hold it all together. Oh, cause you are a faithful father. You are, you are, you are so good, you are so great. And you hold every piece together. Cause you are greater than the mountains. That's in front of me. You are greater. Sing it out. So much greater. Greater than the power of the enemy. You are greater. So much greater. Because greater than the mountain. That's in front of me. You are greater, so much greater, greater than the power of the enemy. You are greater, so much greater. so much bigger than our plans and our ways keeper of the day and the night holder of the sun and the sky you command the waters and the wind yes you do Lord there's not one thing you're not greater than greater than the mountain that's in front of me you are greater so much greater greater than the power of the enemy you are greater, so much greater. Oh, you are so great, God. Hallelujah. Faithful over all of my days. Yes. God above the storms that I face. Hallelujah. My hope is in your name and nothing less. There's not one thing you're not greater than. Hallelujah. Because greater than the mountain that's in front of me, you are greater, so much greater. Greater than the power of the enemy, you are 
are greater, so much greater, greater than the mountain that's in front of me. You are greater, so much greater, greater than the power of the enemy. You are greater, so much greater. Oh, you're greater, Jesus. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. No guilt, no shame, and no sin, no stain is greater than the great I am. No fear, no grave, no other name is greater than the great I am. No guilt, no shame. No sin, no stain is greater than the great I am. No fear, no grave, no other name is greater than the great I am. separate us oh there's nothing Lord there's nothing nothing like your name that holds us together makes us new there's no other name like Jesus no other name no other name than Jesus than Jesus there's no one who holds all power like you Jesus cause death could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the birth of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again cause you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign cause yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name oh the name above all names yes it is yes it is it's the name above all names it's the name that moves the mountains that rides in the storm with his people that's who you are jesus come on let's sing greater than because greater than the mountain that's in front of me you are greater so much greater greater than the power of the enemy you are greater so much greater greater than the mountain that's in front of me you are greater so much greater greater than the power of the enemy you are greater so much greater 
I was thinking as we were singing that song, you know, um, there are cultures in the past that have made a God out of things they didn't understand. For instance, uh, they saw a mountain bigger than them, stronger than them, so they made a God of the mountain. They saw the sun shining during the day. They made a God of the sun. They made a God of the moon. They made a God of the wind. Listen, all of those things, every single one of those things are not greater than the great I am. He is the greatest of all. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the great I am. And he'll be great for you. I don't know what you need this morning. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're, what you're dealing with. But I will tell you this. My God is greater than your problem. He's greater than the mountain you face. He's greater than the storm that's blowing in. He's greater than the wind. He's greater than the sun. He's great. He is the great I am. And he will touch you this morning. He'll bless you. He'll give you strength to make it through. If he doesn't deliver you from it, he'll give you strength to make it through it. Amen. 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 Yes. Let's just pray to him. Let's just ask him to help us. Let's just ask him to give us strength. Father, we just thank you today, God, for you are the great I am. And Lord, we, we come to you humbly just asking you to help us, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to bless us, to walk with us, Lord, as we face this storm, as we go through this mountain, Lord, as we deal with these issues in our life, God, we pray that you are the God of all gods, and Lord, you're able to help us. You're able to strengthen us. You're able to cause us to endure. God, you are able to make a way where there is no way. And Lord, we put our trust in you because you have proven yourself trustworthy over the years, God. There is none like you, no one like you. You alone sit on the throne of the universe. God, you said that the earth is your footstool and it would be until the day that you've uh, 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 claimed it, Lord. And, and we just thank you, God, for those precious promises. Lord, we remain true to you as you remain true to us. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you for your, for your healing touch this morning. God, I know there are those that are dealing with sickness today. And Lord, I just pray you just bring healing. You bring strength. You bring power. God, you give the doctors, nurses, and, and, and give them wisdom and understanding and clarity of mind. Father God, we just, we just release your supernatural power to bring healing, to bring restoration, to bring strength. Father, we just thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can you bless him with me one more time this morning? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. All right, you may be seated. Thank you for worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with us. It's time for us to receive the Lord's tithe and, and his offering today. And I'll just, uh, I'll just tell you, it's, it's on one of these boxes on these four columns or around the walls outside the sanctuary. You can do it now if you want to, but at some point today, if you wouldn't mind dropping your tithe and offering into those uh, boxes, that way we can gather them up. And, uh, or you can give online if you want to. Download the Easy Tithe app. Look for Hobbs First Assembly. That's the easiest way to do it. That's the way we do it. It's the easiest and and you can set it up recurring. That way you never have to worry about it again. It'll just be, it'll just be done and something easy for, for you to do. So thank you in advance for your giving, your faithful support. We've got an announcement video we want you to watch um, this morning. Good morning, church. Here are your weekly announcements. If you're a first time guest, we'd love the opportunity to get to know you better. There is a Connect card located in the seat back in front of you. If you'd fill it out and take it to the Welcome Center after service, we'd love to meet you. If you're watching service online, you can click the Guest button on our website at hopsfirstassembly.org and fill out the Connect card there. If you're between the ages 18 and 35, we would love for you to be a part of Limitless Young Adults on Thursday nights for Bible study and Sunday nights for hangouts. Hey church! 
Just want to remind you that every Monday from 6 to 8 o'clock, we still have our sewing class created by Esther's Beautiful Heart. You still can sign up your child, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your next door neighbors to come be a part of the class. It's Mondays from 6 to 8 p.m. If you have any questions, please call Frances at her, the phone number listed below. Tuesday prayer has been moved to Tuesday nights only from 6 to 7.30. If you guys have been coming, great. Continue to come and bring somebody with you. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to come to Tuesday night prayer, we're inviting you to come. The word says to pray without ceasing. So that's in the good and in the bad. Come and pray together for our families, for our country, for our city, and for our state. God bless you guys, and I will see you guys on Tuesday nights from 6 to 7. Hey church, mark your calendars for our next night of worship, which will be March the 14th. It's a Sunday. It'll be from 6 to question mark. We don't know how long it's going to be. We're hoping and praying for a move of God, and we're inviting you guys to come. God bless you guys. That's all your weekly announcements. Now to prepare our hearts for service. Um, so how many of you are excited about being in the house of the Lord today? It's going to be a good day, right? So we're going to, we're going to continue our series on relationships. Um, and we talked about the first week was Valentine's Day. I mean, how many of you, you got to talk about marriage on Valentine's Day, right? So we talked about that. Then I talked about the role of the father in the family and the importance of that role. And then last week we talked about work relationships. Today we're going to talk about relationships in the church and how how we should encourage one another and bless one another. So we're going to go to the book of Acts chapter 8 and then Acts chapter 9, but we're going to spend the majority of our time in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So we've got all the scriptures on the screen for you if you don't want to if you don't want to take the time to turn in your Bible, but I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. Um, if you're opening your phone or your iPad or your Bible, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, and then we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and that's where we're going to spend most of our time today. So I, I want to talk to you about the relationships in the church. I, I think these are some of the most important relationships of our life. Um, how we treat one another, how we love one another, how we, how we care for one another, how we show one another esteem, how we value one another, one another's time, one another's uh, love, one another's concern, all of those kind of things. If we, in fact, if we talked about all of the one another's in scripture, how we're to treat one another, how we're to love one another, how we're to show one another compassion, if we talked about all of those one another's in scripture, I think there's like 39 of them. So there's a lot of one another's in the Bible that we should, we should pay attention to and we should, we should look at and we should understand. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a passage of scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, or I'm sorry, Acts chapter 8, that, that just shows us the dynamic of relationship. So, so we're going to start with Saul, who later became Paul, who wrote almost half of the New Testament. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but he wrote 13 of the 27 books of, of the New Testament. So he was a great man of God. Well, he didn't start out so good. He started out as a man by the name of Saul, who was very religious. He, he studied the Torah. He knew the Word of God uh, frontwards and backwards. He knew it inside out. Um, but he had not yet met Jesus. And this is in Acts chapter 8. His name is Saul, and it, goes, it says this in verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. So he was like the chief persecutor of Christians in the day. Uh, he, would, he would get authorization from the higher ups and then he would go from house to house. He'd pull them out. He would have them arrested. Uh, we even know that uh, he was there when Stephen was stoned. He was holding 
people's coats who were stoning Stephen. So he was just a mean, mean man. Well, then he had an encounter with Jesus. And how many of you know that changes everything? That will change your heart. It will change your life. It will change everything about you, an encounter with Jesus. So if I can, if I can get you to do anything, I want you to encounter the Lord and his goodness and his mercy and his grace. So he had an encounter with the Lord. Uh, he's on the road to Damascus going to persecute the church and take care of some folks that he heard were up there preaching the gospel. And so he was on his way and there was, he was riding his horse and there was a bright light that shone and he was knocked off his horse and blinded as it were. And a voice came to him and said, why are you persecuting me? Well, Saul thought he was persecuting people, not God. He thought he was doing what God wanted him to do. And now God is speaking to him from this great light. Why are you persecuting me? He said, I don't even know who you are. He said, I'm the Lord. He had an encounter with Jesus. In that moment, in that few minutes, he, he was radically changed to believe Jesus was the Son of God. Uh, the story goes on to say that he was, he was led by the hand blind into, a, into a, a street there. and A man by the name of Barnabas came to him and prayed for him and just saw him changed and saw him transformed and began to be his best friend. Barnabas began to encourage Saul, who was later known as Paul. So let's look in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 26 through 31 is where I want to read there. So, so Saul's had this conversion. He's met Jesus and he's radically changed, radically altered. But then in Acts chapter nine, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. They had heard about him and they knew who he was. And they didn't believe that he was a disciple. And then verse 27, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and now how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem coming in and going out and he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenists and they attempted to kill him. When the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him to Tarsus. And there the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Well, I would tell you this, there came a great change in the life of Paul after his conversion. And as the, as the church began to behave as it should, they, they opened their doors to him, they welcomed him, and, and he began to preach and proclaim uh, the name of the Lord. And the rest is history, shall we say, about the life of Paul and how he ministered. But here's what I want you to notice. When the church began to behave the way that, that they were supposed to act, then the church began to be added to. God added to the church. They, they multiplied greatly. They, they grew. They, they, because the church was the church. The church was behaving like converted people, not mean, antagonistic uh, people. And so relationships are important in the church. And, and if we can get, grasp this idea of how they mold us and make us and shape us, then we can, we can see our church multiply too because we'll be behaving like the New Testament church is supposed to uh, behave. So relationships are not like weeds. If you, if you leave weeds alone, they'll grow, right? Uh, they'll grow where you don't want them to grow. They'll, 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 they'll appear where you don't want them to appear. So relationships are not like weeds in the fact they've got to be cultivated. They, they've got to be worked. They've got to be, they've got to be uh, manipulated, if you will, to become effective and to grow the way the Lord wants them to grow. It's, it's easy to talk about relationships it's easy for me to preach about it, but for us to walk it out, it's something 
uh, entirely different. For us to live it out, it becomes a, a huge challenge for us. For us to, to walk out these relationships, um, it becomes an issue. I, in fact, I say this, people like relationships until they have to change to make room for somebody else. I'm smiling. Are you, smi are you smiling? <laughs> So people like relationships until they have to change to make room for somebody else. So how are we to treat one another? How are we to live with one another? Let's go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And then I'm just going to break this down uh, as we go through these three points this morning. And we're going to look at them. Number one, we've got to learn to recognize one another's gifts. We've got to learn to recognize one another's gifts. In verse 12 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, this is Paul's writing, by the way. He, he's, he's seen how the early church can grow and multiply and be, be encouraged. So, so he's, he's writing to the church of Thessalonica saying these things. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourself. It's not difficult for us to recognize those who, who labor among us. It's easy to see those who work, those who serve, those who give, those who do all of the things that make the church function as the church. It's not, it's not difficult. But listen, God never intended for that to only be a small number of people who actually carry out the work. Uh, he intended it to be all of us. He intended for each one of us to recognize our gifts as well as we recognize other people's gifts and begin to respond uh, accordingly. So there was a statistician who, who uh, years ago worked out this formula. It works in just about anything you want to you wanna set it to, you want to apply it to. It even has significance in the church and it's called the Pareto Principle. Anybody ever heard of the Pareto principle? Okay, it's basically this, that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to let it kind of sink in a little bit so you can kind of grasp it. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. It's called the 20-80 principle. It's, it, it breaks down in every area of life. Basically, you want to break it down to 20% of the people do 80% of the work. 20% of the people give 80% of the money. And 20% of the people care for the other 80%. It just, it's just a given. Well, I'm convinced that we should do more than that. We should, be, we should rise above those kind of stat statistics. We should, we should be willing to serve whenever that opportunity presents itself. We should be willing to give. We should be willing to uh, honor uh, one another's gifts. So, so I, I'm convinced that, uh, you know, for, for years, uh, the church has basically had three deacons and five deacons or seven deacons, some odd number, so they can have a once a month board meeting and talk about all the things. Well, those guys are the, they are the deacons. Well, that's not the way the early church worked. The early church had many, many, many deacons because the word deacon literally means servant. So there were many, many servants, not only deacons, but deaconesses. There were women who served in, as deacons in, in the early church. They, they served, they gave, they worked, they labored. They, they did all of the things that needed to be done to care for the body of Christ, to care for one another, to, to love one another. So I'm convinced of this. More than three deacons or five deacons, we should have 50 deacons and deaconesses. We should have a hundred deacons and deaconesses. In fact, everybody who serves should be called a deacon, should be given that title deaconess. So, so everybody who serves. So then we have, then we can develop an executive board that out of these servants, men and women are chosen to serve on this executive board. And then it just works beautifully as, as deacons serve the body of Christ. They, they love one another. They care for one another. They honor one another and they give to one another. Here's the truth of the matter. 
All of us have gifts that God has given us that we should be using to benefit the kingdom of God. All of us have gifts that we should be using to benefit the kingdom of God. So I wrote this outline early in the week and then as I, as I contemplated that whole, that whole thing, I, I wondered about the phrase, the kingdom of God. I thought about that statement over the last few days and had I not already emailed it out to be put on the slides and the outline, I probably would have changed it, but it got left. Because here's what I think about the kingdom of God. What, what if we change that? It, it sounds a little abstract and it sounds a little far off and sometimes it becomes a little difficult. But re in reality, the kingdom of God is right here among us. It is literally the people who make up the church. They become the kingdom of God. So it would sound like this. We should be using our gifts to benefit people, to benefit others, to benefit people around you. you. You have gifts that God has given you that you need to be using to benefit other people, to benefit those who, who are hurting around you and, and, to, and to use them wisely to, to minister to them and to share life with them and to serve them. So, so, so we should we should learn our responsibilities. What are, what are my gifts? What are my, what are my responsibilities? What are my spiritual gifts? I, I know that there are many of you who know what they are. You, you found them years ago and you've been serving in them and operating in them, but there, there are others of us who don't have a clue what a, even a spiritual gift is or, or even how do we go about finding or determining our, our spiritual gift? Well, I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna, we're gonna have a class that's going to be very soon to help you to determine your spiritual gift, to help you figure out what it is so that you can begin to operate in that and, and begin to serve that. So if you don't know what your spiritual gifts are, you should come to this class. It's called, it's called, it's called First Steps. It's called First Assemblies uh, Membership Class. So we're going to teach you how to determine your, your, spiritual, your spiritual gifts, and, and you should come to that. So listen, when we, when we determine our spiritual gifts, I, I think we gotta be careful that we never, ever, ever compare our gift to someone else's. Because they are all equal in the eyes of God. They're all equal. So it doesn't matter what your spiritual gift is, it doesn't matter what my spiritual gift is, if I'm operating the way I'm supposed to operate and you're operating the way you're supposed to operate, the church is gonna be added to, it's gonna grow, it's gonna mature, it's gonna develop because, because we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're all filling that role, we're all doing. So, so we gotta be careful not to compare one spiritual gift against another because it's unhealthy and it will only lead you to despair and uh, inconsistency. But here's the main reason that we're not to compare ourselves, because all gifts are equal. It doesn't matter if someone uh, has the gift of prophecy or, or tongues or interpretation of tongues or the gift of administration. If all of us are functioning in our gift, we're all equal. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you. Can I, so, so I'll just tell you, we're all serving the same God. He gives out those gifts as he wants to, as, as he deems necessary. He distributes them to every single person in the house. So I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been serving the Lord. I don't care how new you are to walking with Jesus. You have a gift. It's your responsibility to figure out what it is. It's your responsibility to learn. It's my responsibility to help you figure that out. I'm gonna help you figure that out. But once we figure it out, then it's your responsibility to operate in that gift. They're, they're, all, they're all important and they're all needed and they're all trustworthy. All right, so point number two, renew one another. Renew one another. In verse 14, 1 Thessalonians chapter five, he said, now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves 
and for all. So we gotta, we gotta learn to, to walk in this renewal phrase. We gotta, we gotta learn to support those who are struggling. We gotta learn to walk with those who are weak. We gotta learn to strengthen those who are, who are having trouble in a particular area in their life. In the book of Galatians talks about, he said, if you see your brother overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, go to them, love them, help them, but go in a spirit of meekness unless you're tempted as well. So, so we gotta go with the right heart, the right spirit, but then we gotta, we gotta learn to renew one another. We gotta strengthen one another. Listen, it's easy to love if you don't have to interact with people. It's easy for us to talk about love. It's easy for us to even show love if we don't have to do it with anybody in particular. But what, what Jesus is calling us to do is he's calling us to get down and get messy with our brothers and sisters. He's talking about get involved in their life. Help them, renew them. First John chapter four, verse 20 says, if someone says I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So the Bible teaches us to love one another to care for one another, to help one another, to renew with one another. It's easy to be patient if you don't have to deal with people. Some require more patience and grace than others, right? I mean, we know that, we, we believe that. You've heard me say it time and time again. My wife, have a, my wife and I have this phrase for those people who need extra patience, EGRs. Extra grace required. You're sitting out there thinking, I wonder if he's talking about me. No, I'm, I'm not talking about you. So just people on a different planet in a faraway place at a different time, you know, those people were EGRs. None of you are EGRs, right? None of you need extra grace. None of you, I mean, you're wonderful. You're, so it's easy to be patient if you don't have to deal with people. It's the ones who never really want to grow up in God. Those are the ones that I'm talking about. They're the ones that just need some extra grace. You know, I, I'll tell you what, I, they've been around for a long time and still expect everybody to wait on them for everything. Those are the people I'm talking about. They get mad if it's not exactly what they think it should be. You know what, I don't mind feeding someone milk if they need it. You know, the Bible, it talks about uh, providing spiritual milk or the word for, for beginners. I just hate having to part their beard to get the nipple in their mouth. Still love me? All right. So we've got to learn to renew. Listen, the most beautiful thing about the church is the people in it. Oh, I thought I'd get a big amen there. The, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. The most beautiful thing about the church is the people in it. You know what's coming. The most ugly thing about the church is the people in it. So we've just got to develop a thick hide, a thick skin, and get busy serving them regardless whether EGRs or not. Amen. We've got to love them. We've got to honor them. We've got to help them. We've got to, we've got to grow them. We've got, to, we've got to mature them. So I'm going to tell you something. The, the most beautiful thing about the church is the people in it. And the most ugly thing about the church is the people in it. All right, so number three, let's revive one another. Then Paul he just kind of throws a list, a, a litany of things that we all should be doing. And we all should be living. Okay, so are you ready for this? Verse 16, he says this. Rejoice always. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit. Verse 20, do not despise prophecies. Uh, Verse 21, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from the very appearance of evil. So he just throws out this list, this list of 
characteristics, if you will, that every single one of us should be living. Every single one of us should be adhering to. These things should be characteristics of every believer. That we, that we rejoice always, that we, that we pray without ceasing, that in everything we give thanks for this is the will of God. And I mean, that sounds like a sermon series, doesn't it? We just kind of list them, bam, 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 bam. Get these things done, get these things right, and everything will be, will be good. Well, these things should be our characteristics. They should be the way we live, the way we behave, the way we respond. Listen, and, and these characteristics, uh, they can determine whether you, you or not you want to continue to open yourself up to someone. Because if they're, not, if they're not at least living this way, if they're not at least living in these manners, then, then probably you don't want to continue to open yourself up for them. Because if you have someone, if you have faith in someone who exhibits none of these characteristics, uh, chances are you're going to open yourself up to become a victim. You, you're, you, you're just pretty soon, you'll be a, a victim. The truth of the matter is these things cannot be faked. Rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to that what is good, abstain from every form of evil. They, they cannot be faked. Pretty soon it becomes evident and you learn who is faking it. So, so we've, got to, we've, got to, uh, we've got to revive one another. So then, to a great extent, relationships in the church have honestly been dysfunctional at best. Some of the greatest sermon series I have ever, I've ever known about were talking about dysfunction in the church. There are a lot of dysfunctions uh, as far as our relationships, how we hold to one another, how we care for one another, how we, how we love one another. Many people are hurt by the way others have, have treated them. Honestly, if we're just honest with one another, we, we've got to admit that some of the meanest people on the planet are in the church. Well, that, that shouldn't be. That should never be. I, you know, I pastored a church once on a far off planet. My first annual business meeting lasted five hours. Five, five hours. Annual church business meeting, five hours. From seven o'clock at night until midnight. At midnight, we finally wrapped up. I, I, st I told them, I said, look, I've never seen it like this. I mean, people were just mean to one another. They just said mean things. I'm thinking this ought not be. So then I began to preach regularly after that. I said, listen, an unsaved person should be able to come to our church business meeting and leave there encouraged, not discouraged, right? So my first one was five hours. My last one there was 45 minutes and ended in applause. We finally got them turned around. <laughs> they finally started behaving like Christians ought to behave. Finally started loving one another, caring for one another. Can I tell you something? That's the way the church should be. Yes. We, should, we should show our love for one another. We should care for one another. We should, we should esteem others as better than ourselves. And once we get that down, the rest is pretty much candy. Yes. Right? Amen. I know, I know there are issues. I know all of us have faced difficulties. All of us have. All of us had faced trauma right here in the house of God or in the house that you attended, you know, some point, somewhere. Somebody did something, somebody said something, somebody acted in a such a way that was not Christ-like. Can I tell you, our responsibility now is just to forgive them and move beyond that. Our responsibility now is just to say, you know what? I realized that was a different day. And I forgive you. 
and I love you, and I care about you, and I'm concerned about you. That's the only way we're going to get past that. That's the only way that Jesus is going to see us being like the church we should be, and then he's going to add to our numbers because he can trust us with them because he knows he can depend on us to treat them wisely and kindly, affectionately. Amen. Amen. Can I just pray for you just real quick today? Father, I just want to thank you for your, for your grace towards us. I want to thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And Lord, I recognize that I'm talking to some people who have been who have possibly, I don't know, but they've possibly been hurt in the past by others in the body of Christ. And Lord, I just, I just speak to them right now. God is as one who needs to just ask them to forgive us, to help us walk with you, to know, Lord, that we are human. We can fail. We can sin. Help us to have forgiveness. Help us to find it. Now, I want you to listen to me for a couple of moments. I got a story to share with you. There was a man who started attending this same church I pastored on a different planet. He came and he was a single man. I really didn't know much of his background, but after after some time, he said, can I, can I set an appointment with you to come see you? I said, sure. So he, he came by and we just had this wonderful time together talking. And then, and then he starts telling me a story. Him and his wife attended another church in town. And then his wife decided she was done. So she was going to divorce him. And then he began to talk about the pastoral staff, how none of them really reached out to him, how none of them helped him. And, um, you know, he was just looking to start fresh and new. And, and I just, I, I didn't really know what he was saying. So I kind of, I, honestly, I just kind of patted him on the back and prayed for him, said, thank you for coming by. I, I appreciate that. And then a few weeks later, he said, I want to set up another time. I said, okay. So he comes back by and, and we have a great talk. And then he starts talking about the pastoral staff, who, how they didn't follow up on him. They didn't check on him. They didn't, they just kind of okayed her getting a divorce and, and went through this whole deal. And, you know, I'm a little slow. I really didn't get it. So I just kind of patted him on the back again, prayed for him and he left. And a few weeks later, he comes back by and starts talking about the pastoral staff and then boom, a light come on. I said, hey, I am one of those guys very compassionately and very lovingly, I just looked at him. I said, can I just ask you a question? He said, sure. I said, if I ask you to forgive us where we failed you, would you? Talking about pastoral staff. If I ask you to forgive us where we failed you, would you? He goes, well, Pastor, that wasn't you. You don't have to do that. I, I'm not asking you to do that. I said, no, I know. But they're not here anymore and they're not around. Can I just ask you to forgive us just as one of us? Can I ask you to forgive us? He just looked at me for the longest time and he began to weep and he nodded his head. And he said, yes. I said, will you forgive us? And he just began to weep more loudly and just, I mean, just poured out his heart. I tell you, that's all the man was looking for was somebody to say, forgive me. And he forgave us and he moved on with his life and he got better. He never came to see me again after that. Can I just say to you, Will you forgive us? Will you forgive me, forgive us for all of the church in the past who has hurt you, who have said things, who have 
done things that have been harmful, that have been hurtful, will you forgive us? Let's start fresh. Let's, let's start new. Let's begin with some new hope. Let's, let's love one another like Jesus wants us to love one another. Let's help one another. Let's renew one another. Amen. Stand with me, will you? Worship team's going to take us back into worship. Let's just worship the Lord for a few moments. That's in front of me. You are greater, so much greater, greater than the power of the enemy. You are greater, so much greater, greater than the mountain. That's in front of me. You are greater, so much greater, greater than the power of the enemy. You are greater, so much greater. so much greater thank you Father for your great love for us Lord Jesus thank you for being greater than all of those problems we face thank you for being greater than our unforgiveness for our hurt thank you for being greater than our pain Thank you for being great. Lord, we just surrender to you all of those feelings, all of those emotions, all of those troubles, all of those difficulties. And Lord, we give them to you. We don't hold on to them anymore. We let them go. And Lord, we, we love you. And we thank you for loving us with an unconditional love. With a love that doesn't matter it's true it's an everyday love thank you Father amen 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 will you just bless him with me one more time this morning thank you Jesus thank you Father I would love to give an altar call and just see you come and just spend some time praying around the altars but it's difficult for us to do that with all this mess going on. But can I just encourage you just to talk to the Lord about those things that happened in the past. Just turn them over to Him. Let Him, who is greater than them, handle them for you. Let Him help you walk in forgiveness and newness of life and newness of hope and newness of joy. He has all those things for us every day of our life. Yes. Amen. 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 I love you. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. We honor you. We bless you. You are dismissed in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us for this week's service. If you ask Jesus to come into your heart or you rededicated your life, we want to know about it. So stay connected with us on our website. You'll see it below the screen. You'll go to connect. You'll go to prayer request, whatever it is that you need. We want to stay connected with you. Fill out the connect card with all your information. We promise not to blow up your, your email with a junk mail or anything like that or call you or send you out mass text. We just want to know your information in case you need us. Um, we are here for you. So we can't wait to see you guys next week. Please join us.